Hmm. Welcome. I am Christian. This is Lazy Devs. It's early in the morning. Well, it's not early in the morning, but it's earlier than usually. Welcome to our El Pico 8 rog roguelike tutorial. Last time around, we made a menu. We made a menu where you can actually see the kind of stuff you have here in your uh, equipment, in your inventory. Um, so now, uh, today, we are going to like expand upon this. We're going to make sure that this works even better, that you can actually do something with those items. Because right now, you cannot do anything with those items. Okay, let's jump straight in, but before we do... <laughs> That's not really jumping straight in, is it? Um, I've wrote, wrote down some interesting things. Ah, okay, so um, in the update function, there's something that I... I was thinking about this. I was looking at this like, wait a minute, Christian, what are you doing there? Because it's like, you know how you, when you go down uh, in the menu, you reach the end and then, then you cannot go down any further. I like it when in those menus you cycle through. So you know, if you press down now, you will be, um, be on up top. That would be great. But how do I make this this work? Because we have like this thing. It's very compact. It would be nice if um, if we could um, if if we could make this work without adding a lot of code. Um, I'm thinking about. I'm not sure. This might actually be even less code than we have right now. So let me let me try something out. I'm gonna try to use a modulo. Modulo to cycle through because um, you remember modulo from the animation function where we did the same thing where it's like we have like a uh, number that counts and it gets higher and higher and higher and then module allows us to make it instead of going higher and higher we make it loop back so we get an animation going so it like goes higher and then it loops back it goes higher well actually it's the other way around for you guys so it goes higher and loops back it goes higher and loops back and so that's actually what we're trying to do here so maybe that will work let's 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 let's, let's, just, let's just let's just give it a try so here I'm going to go minus equals one, and here I'm going to plus equals one, like so. Just making sure that this works. Yep, the cursor is disappearing, exactly what we don't want to be happening. And so my thinking is now that we're going to do something like um, oh, wind cur equals one plus um, wind cur divided by wind dot txt hashtag um, this maybe maybe something like this let me think about this and then minus one I guess at the end right the only problem is yeah so if it's one and we divide it and we actually get one to add it to it. So it should be minus one at the end. I'm gonna leave it like this and I'm gonna see what happens. So yeah, it disappears too early and then it's, it's uh, yeah. So I think we just need to do a plus one at the end. Let's try that. Nope. Um, so it's like, I think it's, oh man, this is, this is really confusing because the problem is when you do a, um, uh, modulo is that you, um, sometimes get zero out and our menus shouldn't supposed to have zero as a result. So we add plus one, but that's also not good because that, that means what we're actually adding every time. So maybe it's going to be something like minus one and then like some, let's try that something like this. Nope, that doesn't work. Oh yeah, because I guess I have to, yeah, let's try that. Yeah, that, that's correctly now, that works correctly, good. So now we have like this, this menu that will, that will loop through and we are exactly the same amount of tokens. <laughs> so I guess it doesn't matter. Oh man. Mm. I love it. <laughs> uh, but yeah, now we added more functionality now without actually spending tokens, so that's nice. I'm gonna cross this off. So the reason why you have to go minus one and plus one again, because it's like 
um, when it evenly divides, you will get zero. So you always, with a module, you can always make it loop, loop from zero to a number. In order to make it loop, like to have like a minimum number as we have like in our situation, because we don't want to actually have a zero, a cursor at position zero. We want it to have like this minimal position should be one. So we add a plus one to it. But then that means that every time we execute this this function, we get a, like a we advance the cursor by one. So we kind of like counter counter this by doing minus one before we do the modular and then plus one at the end. So it's it evens out itself. Is my explanation to it. <laughs> Anyways, um, good, good. I'm I'm glad. So there's another thing I want to be doing, and that is going to be. Um, Ah, yeah, there's two more things. Um, we last time around, there's something that, that I found interesting. So when you go to the UI, yeah, I thought about, about this part here. I thought about how we do the cursor mode, how we set a specific cursor mode. Maybe we don't need that though. What if, um, if we just set a cursor? And that actually, if that's set to nil, with the cursor position is set to nil, that's kind of like the cursor is off. And when a cursor is set to a number, that means we the cursor mode is on. So we don't have like a specific cursor mode. The cursor variable itself shows you if there's going to be a cursor or not. And that's like saves uh, just one explanation, one one little thing. I always want to jump to the next tab because I had it organized differently in my in my prototype. So here, where we're drawing the cursor, like instead of going W cur mode, we're just gonna go cur. If there is a cursor, then we we move everything to the right, uh, to the right. So there is a place for a cursor, and then um, yeah, and then that's it. Oops. Yeah, nothing changed. It's just like just like one variable less required. Sounds good to me. Finally, um, mm, 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 um, ternary for show inventory equipment. Ah, I know what you mean. Oh, I know what you mean, Jelly Bean. Yeah, there is a ternary that we could use here. Generally, I'm, I'm a bit. This didn't feel good. This didn't feel good to me. The reason why this didn't feel good is like there's a lot of lines, individual lines that we're doing here. I also hate that, you know, we always go add TXT. Uh, it's, it's, there's, I think there's so many ways in which we can make this a lot more efficient. First of all, let's not, uh, let's make these things. Uh, let's define them as a local variable just once. Something like this. Um, let's call this, and I kind of like this where we assign a use a variable um, to, to hold the text and then just add the text just once instead of adding it multiple times because this is like, how many, how many um, tokens is this? So 48, so that's four tokens. And going some um, x equals one, that's, that's three tokens. So we're gonna save a token. Um, so each one of these will cost a token technically. Well, actually, that doesn't make any much difference then. Good. So let's not do that. Um, but still, um, item and EQT is just being defined once as local variable. Then EQT equals this, um, and we're adding the color. Else, um, we're doing this. That, that's that's where we're gonna use a ternary. And uh, yeah, otherwise we are good. And again, there's, we don't, don't have to do the local here. Funny enough, that actually doesn't really change anything. Like defining a local variable apparently just really doesn't change. It's the same, there's, there's no token involved. The local thing doesn't seem to, doesn't seem to cost a token. So it actually doesn't really matter. Weird. The way tokens work, are, is sometimes a bit mysterious. Mm, but yeah, here is uh, what I wanted to use a ternary. So we're gonna go EQT equals um, I, I equals one and weapon. Uh, 
core armor. Like so. And that saved us. I think I was at so it saved us like three tokens, and it's you know a bit more compact. So I'm I'm fine with that. Mm. Good, good, good. All right. So let's see if this works. Yep, that works. Here's the part where things get complicated. So what I want to have now is a function that is being triggered when I press X on a given item in this item menu. So I'm not really, hmm, uh, let me think, let me, let, me, let me look at this. So how did I do it last time around? So I want to have like a little menu pop up that's gonna be our use menu. We're gonna call it the use menu. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna start a new function. And I'm gonna start drawing this use menu. And again, the same way as previously, I'm just gonna fill it with like some bogus values just to see how it looks. Then just to make it pop up and, and like interact correctly, just I can go into it and out of it. And then if once that's working, uh, I can actually start working on on um, on making it do the, the thing that it's supposed to be doing. Um, so I'm not sure if we are actually gonna do this. I don't think we're gonna use this. I'm gonna change this the way this works, this use menu works, I think. Um, right, so um, we're gonna, again, we're gonna use a variable to store this use menu uh, or use window. We're gonna call this use wind. And we're gonna go add wind. And again, I'm copying values from, from over here. So it's gonna be like 84, comma. Uh, now we have to figure out like some position or where are we gonna add this. Uh, just for now, just, just like, you know, for, so we have something in here. I'm gonna take this 17 from above, but we're gonna put in something a lot more smarter in a second here. Um, then 36. And then again, I had like this kind of like equation here. Um, so let's go seven plus um, three times six. Uh, and I have like this little helper here that allows me to calculate this. So let's go with 25 here. And then, so that allows us to have like three, three rows of commands. I'm gonna add those three rows. So we kind of like also, this is also the moment where you kind of think about gameplay as well. Suddenly that's kind of like something that makes often UI so tedious and so slow going where uh, you often have to make UI for, and you're not quite sure for what the UI is supposed to be doing. And um, that leads you often to like down really dangerous paths where the, you start doing some UI for some kind of functionality. And then in the middle of making this UI, you realize, wait a minute, actually my fun functionality is something that I now for the first time really thought about. And I realized that the UI I'm working on is actually not suited to do its task. Um, and also it's like suddenly you have to interrupt programming and think about gameplay. And it's kind of also tough to think about gameplay without having the UI. These are kind of like very tightly interlinked often. Um, so yeah, this would be like the situation where it's like, wait a minute, so we're drawing, we want to draw this menu, but suddenly we actually th have to think about the actual menu items in this menu. Uh, something that really helps here, by the way, is actually um, doing everything um, on a sheet of paper. So because that allows you to kind of design the menu, design the layout, uh, without having to code it. Uh, that's a lot more immediate. And even if you're not really like a talented artist, still just doing like scribbling down menus is something that I think everybody can, can pull off. And um, that allows you to really experiment really quickly without having to get into the mathy stuff. Uh, I already did that though. So I actually know what I want to be adding here. Um, so generally do we want to have something like, mm, equ uh, like menu items that we would, might have something like equip, but because if there's, th this is like, um, if this is like an, a, some kind of equipment, then we might equip it. We might also do something like eat. If this is edible, we might want to eat it. And we definitely, at the end, uh, always want to have trash. Um, now, actually, equip and eat will will almost always like. There's nothing. Not, I don't think there's going to be anything that we can equip and eat at the same time. <laughs> that that would that might be actually funny. Now, actually, that I think of it, that would be a pretty good. Oh man. How awesome would that be if there, it's like it's like edible 
edible equipment so it's like uh, you can wear it but then if if you're really in dangerous situation you can like emergency eat it <laughs> hmm yeah anyways um so let's just like keep those three menu items um actually no i'm gonna add a, a third item instead of eat i'm gonna go throw i want to add a mechanic where you can throw things at people um i added throw in here because i just want to want to make sure if the menu is big enough for what we are what we want to be doing and again um use wind um dot uh cur mode cur equals one we're setting the cursor to one so we are going to add a cur cursor okay so now we want to trigger the show use so let me figure out where, where what the best i guess the the where we want to trigger it is here where we we have this like this um this menu here the um update inf inventory menu because when you press four then this happens and else if btn uh, P5 then and here we want to uh, show use right so let's let's just, let's just try that so now you can you can see this this menu has popped up beautiful I love it uh, it's also kind of really nice kind of like on the edge it's it's on top of our menu you can see that it's drawn on top of our menu underneath so it looks like more important and priority wise I still don't like how our cursor on the menu underneath is like still there and moving so they're kind of like competing for attention, but I think that will be fine. Uh, okay, so the problem is now we cannot, but we cannot actually use the cursor on, in a new menu and we cannot actually go back from that menu again. So this is the moment where I kind of think about, you know, generally like the flow of uh, update functions here. Because you now if you draw, show the show use menu, we might think about, okay, maybe you have like a different update function for that show use menu, but that's kind of bad. Um, because we're kind of like copying the same, almost the same code for the for this this little tiny little menu. So what I thought maybe about instead is, it would be nice. Like at any given point, right? At any given point, we are just always just controlling the cursor in one menu. All right. Like now we're controlling the cursor in this tiny little menu, but previously we were controlling in in this in this big menu. Um, so it would be, I think, make would make sense to have like a. On addition, in addition to all of the variables where we are already controlling menus, to have like a, a variable that kind of like says which menu is the currently active one, which is the currently active menu, and um, just always control this one and like make the update function behave diff differently depending on which of those menus is the currently active one. Um, so I'm going to call this cur cur wind cur current wind or maybe also the cursor window, you know, where the cursor is currently being active. And uh, I'm gonna put inf wind in here. Uh, and then if we switch it uh, to the show use, we're gonna make use wind equals current equals use wind. So this allows us now an update function, instead of like saying like, hey, I always move the menu inf wind, we got just go, go put it in cur wind now. So it doesn't really matter which menu is active. We can always use the same update function and the cursor will be moved in, a, in always in the window that is being currently active. So now you can see if I click now here, you can see that I'm moving the cursor here. That makes more sense. So the only thing I want to be adding now is um, the, those button presses have to work differently depending on which menu is the currently active one. So this is um, this part that we have here. That was for if cur wind equals inf wind then and else if cur wind equals um, uh, use wind then um, so this is like canceling the use menu so if you have like the little menu if you just decide oh actually I don't want to eat it or throw it I just want to see like maybe what what was um, what options were available well in this case I, I want um, the use wind dot dir equals zero. I want this to disappear. I want the inf wind, um, uh, the cur wind to become inf wind. Cur wind equals inf wind. Um, and actually, I might be, um, free up the use wind equals. I don't need it. Uh, it's it's fine. Something like this. I think something like this. 
Um, and the same question, we can later, by the way, we can later on, we can probably change this into, into else. I'm not sure if we're gonna have other menus, so I'm gonna put a star in here to remind us that this might be a way of, of free, freeing up some, some tokens. And then here we're gonna go, if this the, is the current one is this, then like do this. And then if it's here, again, putting a star, um, then, so this is now a use window confirm. This is like the next big um, construction area where, okay, this, this is now where we have to go to, this is where the bacon meets the road. <laughs> Well, the bacon meets the road, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> okay, but you can see now, okay, this is good. Because when you click on it, you see that, that we are, um, we are, um, um, we can move the, the, um, the cursor in this new little menu and you can jump between the menus. Excellent. So one last thing that I want to be changing and that is gonna be, so what I want to do is I want to now populate this menu. First of all, maybe I want this menu to be showing up in the right position. Because right now it just always shows up on, on the edge here and it's not really clear, you know, what it's referring to, what this little use menu is referring to. I mean, I guess you see like the little little cursor pointing at a certain thing, but I think it's even better if we make this menu show in, on the same line that the, the, the item is on. So it's like, here's the item, and then whoop, the menu pops up here like a little drop down. Um, so uh, that's why I had like this equation here because I think this is something that we can like easily implement without us having to like really stress around about this. So we're gonna go like, uh, here we're gonna actually access the cursor, where the cursor is in our inventory window. So the equation I prepared for this is infwind.cur uh, multiplied by six because six is the number of pixels required for each line and then plus 11 is 11 is something I figured out by trial and error so this is going to be the equation that sets the window right right on the same line as our um, as our the item that we're using so you can see now okay this looks a lot more natural now because the menu actually pops up where the item is I don't want the menu to it would be nice if the menu was closer maybe to the item uh, text but I don't want to. I don't want to risk um, the menu overlapping the text. We could figure out, you know, the length of the text and and make it. Ugh, but it's fine. I think like I, I, making it appear here is is okay. Good. So this works. Um, the only thing now I want to be adding uh, before we move on to the actual functionality of the menu. Well, the, I, to some extent that's also already functionality. Is I want to populate it with different elements, uh, different items, depending on what kind of item we're interacting with. So this is actually now where again we have to think about uh, gameplay, where we have to think about what kind of items exist in our game, and you know what you can do with those different items. Hear me out. We're gonna go back to this item name and we're gonna make this, we're gonna create a new um, uh, array. We're gonna call this item and we're gonna go type. So these are gonna be, this is gonna be an array that kind of like defines what kind of types of items we have in our game, like what are the individual items, are, um, you know, what kind of types they are. Broad sort, it's gonna be web, weapon. I'm using strings here. Um, the reason why I'm using strings is that I um, I want to be it to be human re readable. Uh, I could use something like numbers, like you know, one is going to be weapons, two is going to be armor, and stuff like that, stuff like that. <laughs> um, but I don't like that because then uh, if I see the code myself, I won't be able to actually understand what it is. I have to like really think about wait a minute, what was one again, and just spelling it out out as a as a text makes more sense to me, like it makes it more readable. All right, so a weapon is, is, is one type. The second type is gonna be arm for armor. Um, and then the third type is gonna be um, food, fud, it's gonna be food. Actually, fud is the, the way I had in my um, prototype, but I'm gonna change to food. That's, that seems more more ap applicable. And there's gonna be a fourth type that I don't, didn't actually talk about yet. It's gonna be 
THR throwable items. So these are the three, uh, the four item types that I want to have in my game. I can easily expand it to more items, but the, with these four items, I'm gonna I'm gonna start. Web and arm are both equipable uh, equipable items. For those items, I want to have like two th be two things available. <laughs> Maybe later eating. Let's see about that. <laughs> I kind of like the idea. So it's gonna be uh, the menu items for these two items will gonna be equip and trash. Equip equips them in their uh, respectable slot. Trash makes them disappear, just like uh, not throwing them on the ground, but actually destroying them. Um, our, um, arm is the same thing as weapon. It just goes in a different slot. So the um, menu that pops up will be the same. Food is going to be eat. You can eat the food. Uh, and you can throw the food and you can trash the food. Uh, every item will have trash anyway. So it's just like the uh, additional things for the food is going to be eat and throw. And the important thing about this is I want to have the throw mechanic, um, mainly because I kind of like want to have some range abilities as well. Um, but also, um, so I want to implement like an um, ident identification mechanic for the food. So. Um, a lot of roguelikes have like the system where you don't know what a potion is doing until you drink it. Um, so there's, there's like this mystery involved where it's like, oh, it, it could be dangerous. You know, I, uh, I'm in a tough, tough position. Should I try to find my way out of the position or do I risk it drinking something? I think it's not going to be bad, but maybe it will be bad, you know, or in this case, eat. And so I like for the, for uh, for this kind of situation because if it's just like okay you have to eat it to find out and there's nothing way uh, else you can do about it, then it's just like okay I have to take the penalty at some point if it's, this is going to be bad food. Um, and it seems like okay there's like not a lot of interesting things you can do, but um, also like if you get like poisonous food then and you get it and you know it's poisonous then it's like okay I guess I'm going to throw it away and there's like nothing I can do with that. But if you had like a throw mechanic, then you can throw it at an enemy. And I'm going to make it so that enemy always eats the food that gets thrown at them. So um, so if you know that something's bad, you can eat it yourself. Uh, you can throw it at an enemy to use it as a weapon. And also, uh, if, you're, if you don't want to taste the food to see if it's good, you can throw it at an enemy to see what it does. And sometimes it might actually buff the enemy. <laughs> So that's actually, I think that that's, there's a potential for fun things to happen here. So we want to be throwing food is what I'm saying. And then finally, since we have the throw mechanic anyway, uh, then I want to also have like an item that's not consumable, but you can just throw it. And that's going to be like ranged weapons. It's good because it adds ranged weapons, but I don't want, I don't want to have a situation where you can equip ranged weapons. I don't want this to be like, you, you, you cannot equip a bow because that kind of conflicts with the way we attack enemies. Right now we're attacking enemies with like just bumping into them. And if you equip a bow, then would you have like extra button to trigger the equip weapon? Uh, and that's like a lot of explanation, a lot of UI stuff that that or like you know like a lot of exceptions. You know these weapons will work differently, so we have to explain that they work differently. Uh, I just like we can like avoid all of this by make, saying like okay, a lot of your weapons are melee weapons. No other weapons that you can equip that are. You know, just we melee weapons. And then you have ranged weapons, but instead of equipping them, you just use them from the menu. And just let's say like throw this and then it gets thrown. Long explanation, I'm sorry. Uh, but anyway, so what we want to be doing here is now, so in the, um, in here, um, so we kind of have to now figure out what kind of weapon we're using, or what kind of item we're using. Um, um, I'm just gonna grab the item uh, name first and I'm gonna grab the item. So it's gonna be something like local ITM equals, um, uh, uh, so now we're gonna have to figure out which item we're using. Huh. That's not easy. We kind of really depends on, on, because the thing, the problem that we have, we kind of ac can access w what's, what the cursor is on, which of the um, which of the positions the cursor is on, but depending on which cursor is on, we have to grab the item either from the equipment slots or from the inventory slots. So this is not trivial, but we can we can pull it off. It's not that it's not that difficult. Um, so let's do something like i equals invent.cur. Uh, 
And then, um, haha. No, actually, we're gonna use a, another ternary here. Oh, I'm getting like, a, I'm, uh, I, I, I've got a t my taste for ternaries now. So we're gonna go like uh, uh, ITM, the item number uh, equals um, invincur. Infant curve um, is smaller than three. In this case, we know that um, we are grabbing from the inventory slots. And um, EQP I. So if our if the the if our cursor is in the first two positions of the menu. That means we're just grabbing it from the equipment slot. That is the same as the number of the uh, menu position that we're on. That's very easy. Or uh, inf, and this means that our cursor is now below the first three positions actually. So now we are actually in the inventory position. So in this case, we're gonna uh, grab the item number from the inventory position. And that's gonna be I minus three like this. There's a bit of an issue here is like, I want, uh, I don't want to show use when, when we're on the third spot, because that's like the separator. Um, and so that's something I'm going to do here. If Kerwind, um, yeah, the show use, uh, if Kerwind equals infant and, uh, infant dot cur is not equals three. I don't want to show the show use when we are at the separator. Um, okay, so here we now we have now the item number um, from a gr we grabbed it from either the equipment slot or the inventory slot, depending on where our cursor was in the window in the in the item menu. And now, depending on what kind of type it is, we can like um, do different things. So let's grab the type. Um, we're gonna go like local type equals um, item type. ITM, right? We could even like probably skip this. Could just like, yeah, that would be, oh man, that would be, that would be so boss. I'm gonna go item type, square brackets. <laughs> yeah, it's not like this. That might, that might be even, even better. Everything is one big line. It's a bit difficult to read. But we really just care about the type. We don't really care about the the item number. Okay, so if um, type equals web or type equals arm, then oops, then else if and if type equals food. Then actually we can do an else if here. Else if type equals T H R throw, right? Let us let us start a little bit easier. Let's just like add the um let us add those those one by one. So first I wanna have like this text, that's kind of like the text that should appear in our window. That's something that we're gonna initialize as, with an, as an array. And then here we're just gonna go, okay, if this is a weapon or a armor, we're gonna go add uh, text equip. And that's wrong, but but we at least we're gonna have something. <laughs> and then we're gonna here with a food, like if there's gonna food, we're gonna add eat. And then the thing is like food and throwable items are throwable. So these kind of like are separate from each other. So if um, tip equals throw or tip equals food, uh, food, yeah. Then add text throw. And then add text uh, trash. 
this is my thinking. It's not entirely correct just yet because um, if you select an item in your inventory slot, you want to de-equip it rather than equip it. But you know, that's something that we, that, that's, some, that's a bridge that we're gonna cross in a second here. And the only other thing left for us to do is like the height of the window it must be dependent on the number of entries in this window. And I had like this little equation here for that that that's we're gonna use right now. So it's gonna be um, seven plus hashtag txt. So the number of entries multiplied by six, that worked very well for me. So what's happening here? There's a double equation sign that we need to do. Okay, so broadsword. Oh man, Whoo! the global I in nil value. And there's a nil value happening here in our big ternary. Right, oh yeah, I, we don't have an I here. We have um, we only have invwind.cur, so we need to put the invwind.cur instead of the i. Also here invwind.cur. That's a super long line now. But yeah, we got it. So a broadsword you can either equip it or throw it. Leather armor you can either, either equip it or throw it. Red potion you should you should why hmm. I don't like it. It's equipable. It shouldn't be equipable. It should be eatable. Did I, did I do something wrong? Maybe it's the wrong type. First of all, red potion, and let's do something throwable. Um, ninja star. What is? And let's make it not red potion, but. Um, Red. What? What is? What is delicious? Uh, red bean paste. Um, okay, so this is good, um, but I'm not sure why it's not working. Let's try this again. Red bean paste. Equip. Hmm. Um, let me just so we can see if this is working. Let me add a, a f the fourth item to this list as well. So we had a ninja star in our equipment as well. Okay, Ninja Star is equip and throw. That's also wrong. That's also not something we want. We want. This is equip, throw, and trash. For some reason, there is equip always getting in here somehow. Maybe we're not getting the right um, item number is what I'm thinking. By the way, I also wanted to see if, um, okay, I cannot pull up the menu if I'm here, that's good. Ah, interesting, so mm, you have to also check if um, if there is actually something in that slot. So mm, this might be actually a little bit more more elaborate. So let us, let's, let us turn this into a two-step process after all. So we're gonna go local ITM equals, and then we're gonna use this ternary. Um, and instead of like getting the item type immediately, let's 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 just first grab the item. Um, ITM type. And so like this, and then we're gonna go like if um, if itm equals nil, then return. In this case, there's not gonna be any any menus showing up. Uh, end. So now the menu doesn't show up. Now the menu doesn't show up if if um, there is no item tab associated with it. I think that's that's a lot more healthy. Okay, so. Now we're getting the item type here. Um, I want to actually, let me just add the item type so just so I can see what happens. So it's like txt um, type. I just want to like add it to the actual menu as an entry. Okay, that didn't work. Not sure why. What am I doing wrong? Oh, I'm so bah. <laughs> I didn't actually you I didn't actually put the text in the actual menu. <laughs> okay. So 
So yeah, this is weapon equipped in trash. This is armor equipped in trash. Red mean taste is eat, throw, and thrash, trash. Ninja star and throw and thrash. Okay, now it's working correctly. <laughs> oh no, <laughs> that was silly. Okay. Yeah, okay, good. This works. Okay, before we end this episode, real um, a short explanation about one game, important gameplay decisions that I made. So, um, I have bad news. We don't have, we don't want to have, or we can't have, uh, a situation where we can drop items on the ground and they're like there and you can pick, pick it up again. Um, I decided not to do that. There's like multiple reasons for this. Um, the main reason is that it would be kind of like difficult to to implement that kind of system um, where, you know, uh, because then you have to like think about, okay, and is on each, in, uh, on any given tile, can I have one or multiple items on that tile? If I can just have one tile, uh, one item on each tile, that means that if I'm already standing on an item that already has, uh, on a tile that already has an item, uh, and I drop another item on top of that, what happens to this item? Uh, in most games, you know, it kind of like jumps to the next to the next tile over. Like, like it searches for a tile that is free and that is nearby and it will place that new item on the nearby tile. And you know, even if I'm not dropping it, maybe I throw it on against the wall and it lands on the ground underneath the wall, but there's already an item there. So it has to like slide over to this neighboring tile. I always feel like this is very awkward. Even like very complex games like, um, Mm, rim world have like these systems where it can, can only be one item at any given time at a, at a tile and that seems so time uh, like place wasting and awkward so okay so you might be thinking like okay so let's make a more sophisticated system that allows allows us to have multiple items on each tile well then it's gonna you also like open up the camera for us where you if you enter a tile and you want to pick up an item from that you have to like show up a list of all of the tile uh, items that are on this one tile and um, before you know it, you kind of like you're in this miasma and this kind of like hell hole of doing like this super complicated item manipulation placement system that's you're trying to simulate like this world of items where items can be on every tile. And then if you play the game, you will realize that either this takes over and there's like items everywhere. It's like, ah, I don't know what's happening. Or you actually... Um, realize that you implemented this very sophisticated system and it's actually being used very rarely. Like sometimes there's an item somewhere and it's like very awkward to actually do the most basic thing. Just I want to pick it up, but then it just flies over and you don't know which button to press to pick it up. And uh, so I, I realized that I, we're gonna make things a lot easier for us if we just can't put items on the ground. There just can't be an item on the ground. We cannot actually place an item. We cannot like take a food and put it uh, somewhere in, on the ground. We could later on maybe come up with items that we can place on the ground because there is good reason for it. For example, you know, we might have a trap or a grenade or a bomb or something. And then for these, there might be like a special option to be like, place the bomb here. That's fine. If like, if there's a good reason to place an item on the ground, that's fine. But if it's like just, I'm going to throw the sword and this will be on the ground. So I don't, because I don't need it anymore. Most, if you look at, at at Diablo, you know most people start abusing the system and doing really silly stuff. Where it's just, there's like these rows of money on the floor because that's the good way to store them. <laughs> and it's I don't know. It's the, I don't feel like it ever creates like a compelling gameplay, except for maybe something like Spelunky, where it's like okay, but then item manipulation is actually you know part of this whole physics engine, and that kind of like seems more natural. I don't know. Uh, long story short. Um, we, when we th throw away an item, when we trash it, it actually disappears from our inventory, but it also is not anywhere in the world. And when we're throwing items, they're also like gone forever. They're just gonna be a projectile in this. They will turn into a bullet. <laughs> and we fire the bullet and the bullet is gone afterwards. It makes sense, like if you throw a, you know, a food, like a burrito through, <laughs> through space, uh, you won't pick up that burrito and eat it, eat it afterwards, you know, it's gone. It's it's good, that bur burrito is now trash. Um, might be a bit um, annoying when it's about, you know, shurikens or like um, arrows, like precious resources. But I think that makes them even more precious then because you don't cannot actually pick them up again. 
So yeah, um, this is the explanation of what our engine is gonna be. Uh, sorry for this being so long this time around, but you know, we are getting into UI and UI takes a lot of time. If you have any more questions, uh, post them in the comment section uh, in the doobly-doo. As always, there's going to be the code and a link to our Discord where you can like discuss this. And also, I will show you something very sad. Um, I know that I'm selling t-shirts, so there's also a code for those t-shirts, but look, there's one t-shirt that you won't see in the store. The, the saddest t-shirt. The saddest t-shirt. That's the that's the T-shirt that we sell in the store. But it's actually, I tried to print them in the Pico 8 colors, and this is supposed to like the color of the text is supposed to be the Pico 8 dark red color. But the T-shirt was a lot darker than I thought it would be, so the contrast is not really there. Didn't come out so great, so these uh, T-shirts are not on sale. All the T-shirts that we have in the store have really nice contrasty colors. I also made sure that all the cars that make so no sense are clicked out. So check out this T-shirt, they will help the channel. Thank you for joining this time around, and as always, see you next time around, guys. Bye-bye. Things like that. <laughs>